I haven't been posting many videos the last couple weeks. After getting back from being gone most of the summer, I've had a lot of chores to do. Things to do before winter gets here, like planting my winter garden. I didn't do videos on that because garden videos typically don't do well on this channel. Now, getting my own firewood in before winter gets here. October can be a little bit of a crunch time here. It's right after the first rains come in the fall. We get some relief from the heat and the high fire danger. And time right before the winter rains come in November and everything gets so muddy you just can't do anything. But while I was at the coast, we did get some rain and all my firewood got wet. So now I got to get it in and covered up. First into a place where it'll dry, then get it covered up. October is kind of a critical month for getting things done. Of course, if I would have had all my firewood in earlier in the year, like I tell other people they should do, then I could take that off my October list. I have these piles of sawmill offcuts. They're going on two years old now, and I really like using them for firewood. They're mostly Douglas fir, which for a softwood is a very good firewood. It burns hot and it doesn't burn as quickly as other softwoods like pine and cedar. But having a bunch of this stuff cut up into small pieces, it's really good for getting a quick fire going fast. Is that a little bit redundant? A quick fire going fast. Maybe I meant to say a hot fire going really fast. I like using this stuff to get the wood stove heated up quickly. Or if the fire starts dying down and you want to heat it up quickly, throw a bunch of this small stuff on there and it gets going good. Then after that, you use the hardwoods to have a longer, slower burn. But for that use, I have more wood here than I can use in the next five years. But also in this pile, I have pieces like this. has a relatively smooth, rounded edge. Every once in a while, I get someone who asks me if I have pieces like this that would be good for siding to look like a log cabin. So I'm putting the nice pieces aside in case someone else asked me that question. Then I'll be able to say, why, yes, I do. Pieces like this, that would make a good log cabin. What would that be, faux siding? fake siding to make something that isn't a log cabin look like it is a log cabin. Let's take these down to the wood pile, see how close I am to filling up my winter stash. We got a nice little pile here of potential siding pieces. There is a lot of good material like that in these piles, but most of the pieces just aren't suitable for that. I haven't actually sold many of those pieces, mostly because when someone asks me about them, the first thing I think is, now I'm going to have to go through my piles to pick out the good pieces. And by the time I do that, I'm gonna to have to charge so much for them, they're not gonna to wanna to pay that much. A lot of times when people are thinking going through the off cuts to pick out pieces, they're looking for something cheap. And I usually just have too many other things to do. Now that I'm going through the piles anyway, now it makes sense to pull out the good pieces. From what I've seen, I think there's a potential market for these. I don't know if it's a big one, but if you have a sawmill and you produce this kind of material, it's something to think about. I decided to cut these up right next to where I'm going to be stacking them so I don't have to handle and rehandle and transport a whole bunch of little pieces. A few days ago when I cut these ones up, when I cut those up, I laid the pieces out just like this. And I thought, I can keep my saw out of the dirt. I just won't cut all the way through. I'll leave some pieces at the bottom that I don't go all the way through. That worked well most of the way through. Then I got over here and I got to a point where I got the nose of the saw in the dirt. Pretty bad too. I had to sit down, file my saw before finishing the rest of it. And my solution to that was, I'll just be more careful next time. 
So I laid out a bunch more of these, cut through them, and I was a little bit more careful until I got even closer to the end where I got my saw in the dirt again. I was mostly careful, I was mostly successful at it, but that one point at the end, I had to sit down and file my saw again. So what was my solution? I know, next time I'll be even more careful. I laid them out again, and I cut through, and I almost got through, but at, toward the end, I got a little bit into the dirt. So I was almost successful that way. I could build some kind of a jig, especially something that would elevate them up here, and I could cut them like this, but I don't want to build a jig, and I only have a few to do. So I think the next solution is to be even more and more careful. Maybe this time I won't get it into the dirt. And to do that, I put them on perpendicular boards to elevate them off the ground even more. Now we'll see if I can manage to keep my saw out of the dirt this time. If Dave from Old Man and the Saw watches this video, he might retract the comment he made the other day about me being smart. <sighs> I think I did it. I got through the whole thing without getting my saw in the dirt. What do they say? Fourth time's a charm? When stacking wood, I like to stack it on two rails. It gets it up off the ground and I think it makes a more stable stack. Only having both ends of it supported with nothing in the middle. I put the smaller pieces in the middle, then put the bigger pieces around them to hold them in place. I did it again. I didn't cut into the dirt. Yay me. I think that's all the Douglas fir I want for this year. So now let's go up and get some cedar. These are all the cedar off cuts from the cedar we cut earlier this year. I like using cedar for fire starter. Makes really good kindling. It lights a lot easier than Douglas fir does. but it burns up quicker. And the smoke has a nice fragrance too. And so does the wood. And if you want a nice crackling fire, incense cedar is good for that. It cracks and pops as it burns. And a little bit of maple in here too. We'll throw that in just for variety. Thank you. 
That's fur. I got plenty of fur. All right, I think this will do me. I got cedar on the top for starting fires, Douglas fir on the bottom for turning those fires into a quick hot fire, and some hardwood in the back here when I want a slow burn while I'm taking my time watching the world turn. Most of that is madrone with a little bit of oak and a little bit of maple. Many people would argue that madrone is just the best all around firewood there is, and I can't argue with that, but I like to have a mixture of different things for different occasions and different situations. I got this up here where it's exposed to the wind and the sun, or at least it will be, exposed to the sun after the leaves fall off. It's a good place for it to dry and stay dry. It's not a lot of wood, but we have mild winters here. Don't burn a lot of wood. It just doesn't get that cold here. Since I'm going to have to be looking at this pile for the next few months, I took the effort to at least make a relatively straight pile. Taking that extra step just makes it look nicer. And when it's evenly stacked, that helps to prevent catastrophic stack failure, which of course is the technical term for my stack of wood tipped over. And nobody wants that. Well, there you have it. Probably more than you needed to know about my wood burning situation. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.